as a contractor, I have uh, not only fixed my own code in projects, but I've also had a look at other people's code and, and done a bit of code archaeology. And I tell you, for for one thing, confidence in in ensuring that the code does exactly what it says it's going to do is so vital. It's so, so vital. When you're reading code and you're not confident that it's actually doing what it says it's doing, then you start not only doubting that, but you also start doubting the rest of the code base. It's so important to work on formatting, keep consistency, even if, even if you are perhaps doing some bad practice, it's always best to be consistent at it, right? <laughs> However, if you can spot bad practice, I recommend this to junior developers. If you see bad practice in the code base that either you've written or someone else has written, then do flag it up and do so in a manner that isn't mean. Okay, everybody writes bad code. I've written many reams of bad code and I've fixed my own bad code and made more bad code. Okay, so you're never going to get away from bad code and you'll you'll always learn how to improve your code. Okay, going forward. So one year you'll write the bad code, next year you'll fix the bad code, but then the following year you'll realize that that was actually also bad code and you'll fix that too. So it's a constant iteration, iterative process. But if you're a junior developer, flag it, okay? Some things don't need to be fixed immediately. Actually, a lot of things in terms of formatting don't need to be fixed immediately. Uh, but flag it and see if you have the scope to raise it as a ticket if you're using Jira or anything like that and see what is required to fix that bad code and if there's any other places where that bad code resides. You have to ensure that there are tests behind those things because if you make a big change in a massive nested if statement or switch statements or anything like that, you are changing the behavior, okay? So it may look bad, but it might work. And the same goes with the formatting. It may be formatted in a terrible manner, single quotes, double quotes, uh, snake case, and all of that stuff floating about, camel case and all of that jazz. It's very small variables. But if it works, it works. And if there isn't any unit tests behind to back that up, then that is a risk when you go and tidy up the code. So as a junior developer, the first thing I would say is to flag it up and say, hey, I've just spotted this. Maybe we need like a linting tool that we put in our continual integration pipeline. Or maybe we need to spend some time to, you know, tidy up these nested ifs conditions. But do so with the knowledge that maybe people are going to push back on you because they don't want to rock the boat because they know that there isn't enough tests to back up those changes. And it might be, oh, I'm just going to change the single quotes to double quote because that's what we all use. But actually that change could be quite a significant change and screw things up. Also, it's very prone to human error. Very, very prone to human error. What I recommend is things like PHP STAN, PHP CS and PHP CS Fixer, uh, PHP STAN for static analysis, all of those kind of things, they're fantastic. And if you don't have them in place, you're going to make work for yourself. 